friends, welcome back. Today's video, I'm going to be doing a wrap up of the eight books that I finished in January of 2021. So let's dive right in, shall we? So as I said, I read eight books. My goal this year is to read 80 books. So I am on track. And the first book I read is actually probably not going to be relevant for most of you, but it is a book about PCOS. So personally, I do have PCOS. It's a very common uh, condition. I've, I think about one in 10 women have PCOS. And for me personally, I'm always looking to learn more about it, to learn more about different treatment options, supplements, natural remedies, stuff like that. And this book was a very comprehensive guide to a lot of those things. I think if you are someone with PCOS, you know someone with PCOS, and they are looking for more natural options, I think this is a really good option. I'm not going to talk about it too much because it is a, a kind of a specific audience for that book, but check out my Goodreads if you want to hear more full details of my thoughts on that book, which I forgot to even mention it, is Eight Steps to Reverse Your PCOS by Fiona McCullough. Then I kind of got on a Roxanne Gay um, bandwagon for a little bit and I actually read two Roxanne Gay books back to back. I read Bad Feminist and Hunger. I read Bad Feminist, I really liked it. I gave it four stars and then I was like, I'm just gonna keep going with Roxanne Gay. And I read Hunger immediately afterwards and I also gave that book four stars. So both of these books are pretty similar. However, they're, they're different in kind of the topics uh, that they cover. So Bad Feminist is more focused on feminism essentially and how and kind of questioning what it really means to be a good feminist or a bad feminist and and then hunger is really more focused on Roxanne Gay's personal struggle with weight gaining weight being a heavier person kind of how she has struggled with her weight over the years, how she's used gaining weight as a coping mechanism for things that have happened to her in her life. So I really enjoyed reading both of these books. I will say there is a little bit of overlap between kind of the stories that she's talking about. So, so I probably wouldn't recommend necessarily reading these back to back like I did just because if you do that, it will be a little bit repetitive. I thought both of them were very thought provoking and interesting. The only other difference I do want to point out is Bad Feminist, I would say is more of a, has more critique of media. So you'll have like critiques of different TV shows, movies, stuff like that versus Hunger, I would say is more personal to Roxane Gay in particular, but both of them I really liked. I think they're easy to get through. They are entertaining while still being thought provoking. So yeah, I would definitely recommend either of those books. Next, I read, I read, the Wife Upstairs, which I'm not gonna get too much into this. I'm gonna post a three minute thriller review on it, but basically it's a very, very generic domestic thriller. It's okay, like I think it's entertaining, it's good, but it's not anything spectacular, so. Uh, yeah. Next, I read Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar, which I know a lot of people have talked about this book, but I did get kind of the immediate inspiration to read this from Akela from Books and Lala, her top of books. And this book I actually really liked. I was a little bit skeptical just because I find that I haven't really been liking a lot of YA books. I don't read a ton of them, mainly because I never really liked them that much. But this book I actually did I did like, I was kind of between four and four and a half stars. So basically the book is about a transgender boy who lives in New York and he is struggling with finding his own identity. He's struggling with bullying and kind of dealing with um, kind of other people's perceptions of him and how he kind of interfaces with the world. And I really liked kind of pretty much everything about it. The only thing that I would say I didn't love about it or the only thing that was like maybe holding it back from five stars is I feel like it was a little bit predictable, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. I definitely would recommend it. Next, I read Snowflakes by Ruth Ware. And this is actually an exclusive audiobook by Ruth Ware that's available on Audible. And it's a short story. It's, I think the whole thing is like less than an hour as an audiobook. And I have kind of mixed feelings about this one. Again, it is kind of annoying that it is exclusively on Audible. And also it's like a full credits, which I felt kind of annoyed about considering that it is a short story. And it's like, I could be spending this one credit on like a full on book, but I really like Ruth Ware. I like seeing what she comes out with. So I did go ahead and get this one. And this one, 
Um, basically, I don't want to talk too much about it just because it is a short story. And so if I give too many details away, it's like, boom, the whole thing is disappeared. But basically, it's, it's about this girl who lives on this remote island and she lives with her father and her siblings and there's some crazy stuff that's happening to them. It definitely had some heavy hand political commentary as well, which was kind of the reason I didn't like it. Um, well, back up for a second. I gave it three to three and a half stars. So I did like it. It did not stand out to me as a four or five star book for two reasons. I would say number one, some of the political commentary aspects of it felt a little bit heavy handed, but I don't know, it, it also kind of made it thought provoking. So I had a little bit of mixed feelings on that. And then also the plot itself was just, I don't know, it did not stand out to me as a four or five star book. I think it was okay. I think if you have extra audible credits, check it out, but I probably wouldn't like run to get an Audible subscription if you don't already have one just to listen to Snowflakes. But yeah, that was just my thoughts on that. And then the final two books I read were actually two books about Judaism. So just to give you some uh, details about me personally, my husband is Jewish. Personally, I am not. However, I feel like we've both kind of gotten more interested in just learning more about Judaism since he has really not been actively like practicing Judaism for a very long time. We've been, next year is our 10 year anniversary from our first date. And basically the whole time I've known him, he's been very, not very active in uh, his Jewish heritage. So we've kind of both gotten interested in learning more about it. And I find it fascinating. I think Judaism is a very beautiful religion. I think there's a ton to learn from it and about it. And I kind of dove right in and I read two books about Judaism this month. And the first one is Living a Jewish Life, which is basically, I would say, a practical guide to Judaism. So I would say if you are someone who is looking to either learn about the practicalities of what it means to actually be Jewish day to day, or you're someone who is looking to kind of embrace Judaism for yourself and kind of incorporate it more into your life, I think this book is really good. So I think it's best if you're not Jewish and looking to learn about Judaism, or you're looking to learn more about Judaism to better understand people in your life who are Jewish or a spouse that is Jewish. I also think it's good for people who maybe grew up Jewish or are Jewish by heritage, but maybe aren't doing a lot of the actual practices of being Jewish. So I think this book is really good for that kind of rundowns, like what do you do on the holidays? Like what do you, what should you have in your home? Like what is keeping kosher all about and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed it. I think, yeah, I gave this book five stars. It's not for everyone. I think if this is not sound appealing to you, it's probably not worth reading. But I think if you are someone who kind of fits that uh, audience that I just talked about, then it's five stars. I would re definitely recommend. And then finally, I read a book that was also kind of about Judaism, but was more of a, a memoir. And this is a book called Devotion, a memoir by Danny Shapiro. This book I was kind of between three and a half and four stars on. Basically, it has like a very eat, pray, love kind of vibe. Basically, it's about this woman who has this midlife crisis and kind of rediscovers Judaism. But it's, I don't know, it's, kind of, it's a little bit a slow meandering uh, like self-reflection kind of book. And even though I feel like me and the woman who wrote this book are very different in a lot of ways and have different life paths, different religions, kind of different circumstances, I feel like I, I still felt really drawn to her story and I felt like I really could relate to her on a lot of things about um, kind of discovering your own path and kind of like where you want to go with your faith and stuff like that. So I I really liked it. Yeah, those were the eight books I read in January. I feel like a lot of these books are just like not going to be relevant to you. But um, if they are, let me know down in the comments. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books. I would love to know your thoughts on them. And yeah, that's it. Until next time, guys. Bye.